Most medieval friaries share similar complex layouts with a church running east to west. At Ross Early you first enter the nave in the west. This was where the people would gather for mass. The church or chancel is situated in the east and is where the friar's communal mass was held. It is characterised by the ornate east window, which was the most important feature of the church, and displays switch and bar tracery, which was a favoured window style of the 15th century. The window was also practical and symbolic, as it allowed the beams of the rising sun, which also symbolises the risen Christ. Under the window rested the grand altar, where today rests the tomb of the O'Flaherty's, who before the year 1172 and spanning 700 years owned the entire barony of County Clare. To the right of the grand altar still rests a double aubrey, which held holy water and wine during the mass. Separating the nave from the chancel is an inverted five-storey belfry or tower which is 70 feet high and once held the friary's bell. It also contains a rood loft, which looks out over the nave. It would have contained a pulpit for preaching, along with a crucifix, and present on either side of it would be the statues of the Blessed Virgin and of St. John, which were lit at all times by an oil lamp. Positioned below the rood loft would have been a rood screen, an ornate partition described as being rich in tracery and usually made of wood. Positioned south of the nave is a double transept, which were also popular additions in the 15th century. Mass was central to the spiritual life of the observance. Friars celebrated a daily private mass which primarily took place within small side altars located within the transepts, while the main grand altar was used for the conventual mass. This is evident in the transepts of Ross Early. Two later additions to the abbey are the Ladies' Chapel, believed to date to the 16th century, positioned on the eastern side which contains an altar over the east window with an aubrey in its south wall. On the western side sits the Chantry Chapel, which is a chapel dedicated to one family, built in the 17th century. A plaque rests over the altar which dates to 1670 for the Jennings family of Iron Pool. Beneath the tower is the pointed arched doorway which opens into the cloister which was primarily used as the friar's outside space and around which are arranged the many rooms of the friary. Four albulatories surround the cloister, which gave shelter to friars on wet days and functioned as the main pathways to the rooms of the friary. Positioned to the east is the sacristy and the guest house. The sacristy is positioned below the guest house with an entrance from the chancel situated on the south wall of the sacristy and is presently blocked by a tomb. The sacristy held all the chalices, vessels, vestments and altar clothes used within the ceremony. The guest house, containing a huge fireplace, was the sleeping quarters for visiting guests, weary travellers and where the guardian would have slept, the superior of the friars who dealt with their spiritual well-being. Positioned over the west walk and overlooking the cloister is the library, which would have been entered into through the southeast wall, which also led to the rood loft. Also present here is a stone-carved crucifix a reminder to the friars of their devotional practice. At the southwest corner is the passage to the pulpit, used for friars to preach sermons they wrote within the adjoining library, which was kept warm by the striking fireplace. Positioned on the north end of the east walk of the cloister is the refectory. This room was where the friars ate their meals in silence, as situated in the northeast corner is the reader's seat, where friars would preach from the observance rule on poverty and other devotional readings. Located above the refectory is the dormitories, which are characterised by the small square windows which face north. The heat from the refectory would help keep the friars warm, as they were not allowed private cells and slept on a mat with only a blanket and a pillow. Outside the refectory was the lavabo, which was used for the friars to cleanse their hands before meals. To the north of the cloister rests another open courtyard, which is an unusual feature but shows that the friary at Ross underwent great expansion to accommodate their growing community. Next to the courtyard is the kitchen, which contains a great chimney and an oven aperture. In the northeast corner is a fish tank or reservoir used to store fish caught within the nearby Black River. To the north of this is the mill, which would have pumped in water to the fish tank. The mill only worked in the winter months, as it is suggested a nearby turlock supplied a stream which ran southeast and turned the mill. East of the kitchen lies the bakehouse, where food was stored and prepared. Over the bakehouse is the chapter room. An impressive chimney occupies the western wall, and next to it a storage cupboard. This is the room where the friars gathered and were allowed to socialise within. It was also used for meetings which were held once a week which dealt with the running of the friary. Most importantly, the provincial chapters were held here, which dealt with issues regarding debt, 
expansion of buildings and to ensure that the community was living in strict religious observance. As explained earlier, Ross Early had a chapter meeting in 1647. The layout and architectural features of Ross Early are exceptionally preserved and restored, even after its turbulent history. But it is a masterpiece of construction and offers us a great insight into the lives and daily routine of the observant community which once resided within these walls. Oh.